Andreas, we're here at the FQXI conference, uh, Physics of the Observer. Um, some people would be surprised to see so much importance being put on the concept of observation, which has uh, been in, uh, in quantum mechanics for almost a century now. Well, what's the issue? Well, I think um, from my point of view, the issue with the observer is that it ties in very closely to problems in cosmology, which is my specialty. So, so we, we have all kinds of things that happen in our theories, and we try to make sense of how to connect them with, with our data. And more and more, I think people are appreciating that understanding how the observer works is important to, to get to the bottom of what our theories really say. Okay, well, take it further. I mean, what are specific uh, applications of that? Well, one of them um, is, so, so I, I think a lot about probability, mm -hmm. and, and I, I know that we, um, how, how we use, so I've taken a closer look at how we as observer use, observers use probability in day-to-day -day life, and from what, I, what I've learned from that, I've concluded that people are using, many people are using probability wrongly in cosmology. How so? so? so so they, um, they take situations, so what I've learned is that every time we use probability day to day, it can be traced all the way back to quantum uncertainty. So that's really the origin of probability, every probability we know. Okay. And in cosmology, there's certain theories where very important questions have been proven without a doubt not to have a quantum answer. And people think they can finesse, they can just throw in their own ideas about probabilities to, to fix that. And I'm, I'm very fiercely critical of that. They, they, I, th I think they've just got it wrong. In other words, they're using probabilities as part of their cosmological theories, but not because there's no quantum basis for it. You think those probabilities are... are, are False. They're, 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 they're incorrect physics. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, I, you know, I, I will concede that theorists can invent anything they want sure, to build their theories, but they're not solid probabilities as we know them. They're not a reasonable extrapolation from the probability. So, so then how then are you relating the probabilities to the observer? Because the observer um, uh, 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 kind of chooses the, in the probability um, uh, function? Well, thinking about how the observer works and how we relate to the quantum fluctuations in our bodies and the world around us is, is, what, is what has taught me that probabilities are, are quantum. So it's by thinking about how the observer works that I've Okay, that. so you've gone from thinking about the, how the observer works to recognizing that all probabilities are quantum probabilities. Right. So help me understand that connection a little deeper. So one thing, in the paper we wrote on the subject, I, I wrote a paper with Dan Phillips on the subject, um, we analyzed the coin flip. The coin flip is a classic right. probability problem, and we traced the physics of the coin flip right down into our nerves and identified quantum fluctuations in our nerves that control, that, that, that affect how you flip the coin sufficiently. The in your thumb or... Yeah, exactly. So, so basically when you go from saying, okay, flip, to the actual flip, um, there's some quantum uncertainty into when that signal gets there. And in, that's enough, uh, sufficient in to... thousands or tens of thousands of neurons and muscle cells and... Well, even just in one in one neuron, there's enough there's enough uncertainty to. to and to, and to where is that quantum uncertainty? Because there are there's lots of billions features. of so uh, so so where where is there's, there's something um, so so something that controls the the speed of the signal has to do with um, polypeptides that that either occupy or don't occupy okay. ion channels right, right, in the nerve right. and the the total, the, the, the body controls the speed by controlling the, the density of the polypeptide, so more, you know, more density means more. Okay, so now I understand the, the last mile, yeah. but how do, well, what about that first mile where the observer is affecting the wave function of the, uh, uh, of the quantum probability? So, so um, I, I think that mile is all we've got, all we need to worry about. <laughs> Is, is one, once the rest is classical, the, the coin flips. Oh we, yeah, yeah, we sure. Measure, sure. We measure. Sure. So maybe I missed your question. But. So, so uh, I, the first mile I'm looking at. In other words, you're talking about uh, how the proteins affect the nerve impulse right. at, at, at the it, which then goes into classical 
physics in terms of the coin flip. So how does uh, how does the observer make that happen? So so it's really more what our experience. So our experience as observers is through the quantum process. Right. So so it, it's. I think that's. I think there's nothing more to say about that. Well, it, it, if your, that's true, question. that's very profound. Yeah. But I, so I'm, not not, getting, I'm not so getting sounds, why, why it's... I, I want to understand why, why that statement is true. So... Um, In this specific case on the nerve impulse, because that's a very specific case. So, so I, I might be... So it sounds to me... So I'm trying to guess... I'm trying to connect our thoughts a little more clearly. I, I'm guessing that you've heard lots of people talking about how the observer makes the, makes right, the right, measurement. Right, right, right. But as, a, as an Evredian... I, I I feel that's a kind of marginal okay, so, marginal point. Okay. And it doesn't I mean we So you believe that the of all these branches, we're following one of the branches that we're on for however, and there are all these other branches. So the, the observer is then participating in all the branches. Uh and it in makes this the process. observer less profound seeming. Uh, okay. So you're but that, is, for but the that right. is profound. That's profound. That is yeah, profound. Right. So saying something that people thought was profound is yeah. not. Yeah, it's it, profound. It really right. is. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. But I, that I feel very strongly and I feel um, that's what part of the power of the Evredian approach. Right. Is that you, you, in my view, you re you completely remove the mystery of the observer. Now, so I'm great with the idea that the most profound idea is that there's nothing profound about the observer, just a bunch of record keeping. But what you're making me do is carry the baggage of Everetti in multiple worlds, which is crazy. So I agree. <laughs> so so I have to say that bugs me. So so I know some colleagues are so serious about Everetti. Very so. They they. They'd be really disappointed in me to hear me say that, but, but it does bug me. And what I tell myself, what I do with that annoyance to my, for myself, is I say, I don't think it means I need to change physics. I think it's the price I pay for having the intuition of a tiny little classical being living in this giant quantum world. And, 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 and so I attribute it to the, my, my shortcomings, the shortcomings of my intuition through my classical life, through, through, through the kind of observer I happen to be. But I, um, but I agree it bugs me. <laughs>